most enjoyable afternoon of the season this. Right, you. Off. Oh, come on, ref, he never touched him. Look at his face. Just look at his face. He's off. Oh, hey, ref, do you want to borrow these? If you're looking for a level-headed manager, he's your man. This week we recreate Avi Cohen's debut match at Anfield. Ooh. And we'll be saying a big hello to Dean Grey Goose. Hello, I'm Dean Grey Goose. Hello! hello! <laughs> but first, a few things we noticed from watching football this week. Following last week's news about Alan Ball's head going missing, we think this bloke may have swallowed it. It's the players, really. I mean, you know, you've been getting into the players and uh, that's what I'm in the game for, really. He's in there somewhere. Isn't Very he? good, that is. And Coventry rested Gordon Strachan this week so that he could spend some time with his two daughters. They'll be carnage. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, in the African Nations Cup, disaster struck for John Cissé of Sierra Leone when he got his head stuck in the pitch. <laughs> Trap. And there was a terrible mix-up at the African Nations Cup after the authorities told Ghana they could train on the terraces. <laughs> and rumours abound that Maradona might be signing for Nottingham Forest after he's had secret meetings with Frank Clark's better-looking brother. <laughs> <laughs> we launch a new competition this week in which you can win exciting little bits of football memorabilia. This week we've got the pen that Keith Gillespie used when he signed for Newcastle. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you've had some Valentine's cards, that's a... <laughs> No, you have. Yeah, no, I like this one from uh, uh, Helen McFarlane from Aintree. Oh, that yeah. was a twist. I like the racing. I thought maybe look her up when I go up to the mat. Yeah. Is she a horse? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Ten quid says it's John McCreary. <laughs> and it turns out. Oh, uh, by the way, Stato, uh, I've got a Valentine's card for you. Now it's time to bite the pillow and cry. <laughs> Aye, 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 the beat is crazy. Soccer, soccer everywhere. Yes, Faustino Asprilla's arrival and the subsequent sale to Melvin Bragg finds me in South American vein this week. Still heading the table is Signor Deaton and his new amigo, Zoe Ball, thanks to clean sheets amongst his defensores and a goal from QPR conquistador, Robbie Fowler. Tonight's guest, Neil Morrissey, appears to have taken a siesta. Andy Linegan picked up a clean sheet against Forrest, as well as Jason Lee's elbow, to earn Neil his only points of the week. Another quiet week for our other guest, Danny Baker. El Grande Steve Grizovich contributed three points. But if Danny's ex-Millwall hombre, Teddy Sheringham, hadn't left his shooting boots in the Spurs dressing room, it might have been a different kettle of pescados. And, oh yes, Alan Davis is still bottom of the table. Oh, he's good. Right then, we had a letter from uh, Gary Slater from Derby, and he said, I thought I'd send you a picture that was... <laughs> <laughs> Is he here? Yeah. I thought I'd send you a picture that was featured in a programme from our 1985-86 uh, Division 3 campaign. It shows our former left-back Steve Buckley and wife with their very, very friendly dog. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, interesting, that reminds me of something. That reminds me of a letter that we got from uh, Simon Garrett, who says that on a recent visit to Molyneux to watch Wolves play, bought the fanzine... The, yes, yes. Uh, he bought the Wolves fanzine, and uh, let's have a look at what was in that. There's a headline, Skinner launches Baggies Junior Members Club, and let's look what that's talking about. <laughs> You see, that's what the Labrador reminded me of that. <laughs> that was a bitterly cold day. Was it? In Italy. Oh, you could have grated cheese on my scrotum. <laughs> yeah. now, Parmesan. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and it is it, it, this old laugh. God, this is from a bloke who claims to be called Elvis Minogue. Right. <laughs> from uh, Hockley in, uh, in Birmingham. So it's possible, I mm. suppose. It says, Dear David and Frank, please find and close a photograph of Barry Fry and his family from the Daily Mirror, February the 10th. If you look closely, you will see that Barry's house appears to be haunted by the ghost of Stato. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got this letter from Annette and Dean Grice, and it says, Dear Fancy Football League, when my husband and I visit my grandparents, we often talk about football in general with my granddad while my grandma looks bored. Until the other day, we were talking about your programme and mentioned Jeff Astor Sings, to which my usually silent grandma remarked calmly, I used to bath him. <laughs> bath him, we asked. She then proceeded to tell us how she would help Jeff run with her children 50-plus years ago. Can you believe it? I bet she's got some tales to tell, yeah. <laughs> What was the name again? Vera Seven. Oh, my God, it's Vera Seven! Oh, Vera, Vera, Vera Seven! Vera Seven. Hello, Vera. Hello. Oh, that's a type of gel, isn't it? Pardon? <laughs> Hello, Vera. It's a type of gel. <laughs> that's right. Um, so you used to bath Jeff? I did. Now, when, when was that, roughly? When he was a baby. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wasn't suggesting anything. Yeah. <laughs> Where was this, Vera? What part of the country are we talking about? Eastward in Nottinghamshire. Right. Goodness me. Um, is, is there no where... <laughs> Didn't Alan Buckley come from uh, Eastwood? Alan. Yeah? I don't know him personally. I know of him. Yeah. But he come you know from... You know of him as well, don't you, Frank? Yeah. <laughs> he come from Moorfield Avenue. <laughs> Sorry? He came from Moorfield Avenue of... Green Hills Road, where... Jerry I know it. I know it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. And, of course, Steve Stick Buckley... Me. Steve Buckley, we spoke about earlier, bloke with the Labrador, is Alan Buckley's brother. So yeah. he must have lived around there. He didn't know the Labrador <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... Oh, so. my goodness me. Who on earth is that now? Getting exciting. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It is, Jeff, isn't it? It sure is. But you've got round. Uh, you got me round air early tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have a bit. You go. You come with Steve Buckley's Labrador for later on, have you? <laughs> well, I have. But I've not got all my costume on yet. Yes. Uh, best if you leave the bottom half. Yeah. I think for now. How much is that doggy <laughs> in the window? The one with the shiny red... Yeah, all right, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> come, and meet, come and meet an old friend of yours. Take that off. Come and meet an old friend of yours. It's Vera. You Hello, Vera. Hello, Jeff. Hi. All right, nice nice see you, darling. Nice Hello, see you. Vera. Wasn't that a type of... Yeah, I think it was a yeah. type of... Uh... <laughs> so, um, what was it like all those years ago, being bathed by Vera? Well, uh, it was lovely. I used to enjoy it. Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember it, Jeff? Yeah, I still remember Vera very well, yeah. Very well. Yeah. Didn't Her be... husband. Yeah. So there are a lot of se the name is Sevens, and there's a lot of Sevens where we live. They're all terraced houses. Yeah. You know, but uh, I remember. That must very, be confusing well. for the postman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days, you know. We are, I had three brothers, three sisters. You know, the same as saying. Along yeah. in them days, you had a lot of families. Right. And they used to mix with each other. Yeah. Didn't they? She used to come yeah. bath me. My mother used most probably go and bath all their family and things like that. They used to mix. <laughs> so we never got to around and bathe any of our neighbours. No. Yeah, perhaps you hadn't, no. Frank. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
wouldn't mind bathing the woman in the flat downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was That's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Claire. Anyway. Yeah. And you, didn't you have a relative who was a... <laughs> oh, it sounds like they've sorted out the yeah, bottom come of on, the costume, costume must be ready. Come on, Vera. <laughs> Off you go. Vera, Now, anyway, we had a we had a letter from um, Andy Lee from Stoke, right? Come on, pay attention. <laughs> and uh, he said uh, I was flicking through my girlfriend's copy of Fiesta when I noticed. <laughs> You see, I believed it. Yeah, I believed it as well. Wrong with that. When I noticed the photo of Gary Lineker in the reader's wives section. <laughs> yes, Gary. <laughs> well, clearly a lot of you have been looking at the reader's wives section of... Uh, <laughs> various pornographic magazines because Mr. G. Dyskins says that while sadly flicking through a magazine, he came across this picture of Peter Schmeichel. What's <laughs> 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 uh, going on then? The Great Dane, as they say. That's not them, do you think? It's Neil Morrissey and Danny Baker. Ah. <laughs> Oh, oh, gentlemen. Okay, readers' right. wives, eh? Yeah, yes. very good. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Uh, on readers' wives, you know what they do? Uh, their graphic is at the yes. top of the page. For the readers' wives page, I do it's, know. It's, right. a, it's, a, it's a ring donut. <laughs> and after <laughs> the ring donut, it's got one for the ladies, which is the husbands, and there's a long eclair. A fact, that's what they have at the top of the page. So you I, know don't, exactly I don't know what, what you're talking about. about <laughs> <laughs> that's where we bought the, uh, recent German signings from, I believe. He pronounces it Minger. He pronounces it Minger, but it's spelled M I N G E. Well, so, Neil, how are you, mate? <laughs> Have you been reading Fiesta recently? Or... No, I haven't, actually. I haven't read it for years and years and God, years. Uh... Yeah, that's absolutely true, actually. I always find that the best ones are those you find in hedgerows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always the best ones. So, uh, what do you think about uh, a spreer and all that? You're not bothered about it. I'm not, you know, oh, do you, want to open, do you want to pull at that thread? You know, I'm not, I don't approve of the adulation of foreign players. You no, know you that. don't, do you? When players are clapped out on the continent, uh, and I think Bergkamp's clapped out, and I still think your bloke's going to be proved to be clapped out. He's having a good season so far. Rude one good, se one good season, Come yeah. On. We're so grateful. Who's We're that? Rude Hullet. Hullet. Oh, right, right. One I mean, season, that's my... all they got. We buy them at the tail end, like Millwall bought Pat Van Den Howell. Yeah. And we were so, <laughs> we were so <laughs> grateful. Yeah, very we were players, so grateful for Pat Van Den Howell. <laughs> and everyone I know who supports a Premier League club went, <laughs> have him. And I believe that's what Europe says about the British clubs. That old look at them turning cartwheels because they bought a 34-year-old bloke, the Dutch. Yeah, uh, he's only absolutely brilliant, though. Yeah, but we should have our own. Don't, don't, yeah, for one season. No, Why don't Chelsea get some seventeen-year-olds out their own ranks and have some They're not as good seasons. as Rudel, and they have got seventy or Dubois out the ranks, and he's brilliant. Yeah, come he on, is. he's had about four or five. Yeah, I think he's getting a bar on past reputation. Right, past reputation. He's having a good season. Not All right, you two, just calm <laughs> down. All right. God, we yeah. kill for somebody who's good for one season. <laughs> 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 Sorry, sorry, as I say, the only foreigner we bought was Dowie, and we sold him again, didn't we? I don't, think, I don't think the planet Xenon counts. <laughs> <Yeah, precisely. laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the first um, foreign buy I remember, and Villa bought this bloke. This, there he is. Look, he's an Argent Argentine international. Can we see him there? And his name, I don't know if you remember him, his name was Oscar Ars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is I, like I remember my brother got it slightly wrong. My brother Keith came in the house and said, Have you heard Villa's bought somebody called Alfie Arse? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is, uh, have you seen this? It's Manchester United Diet Cola. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Very bitter. Did you watch the, uh, <laughs> I've watched <laughs> Alex <laughs> Ferguson <laughs> bottled it himself. <laughs> Which, if you take it on the continent, it goes flat. Oh, so <laughs> Anyway, nice though. Do 
Did you watch the African Nations Capital? What channel was it on? Um, was you it? The one that always has poor was old uh, Archie McPherson sitting in Wardour Street <laughs> with no one there. <laughs> yeah. Well, he only can tell you what's on screen because he's watching it in solo on a screen. <laughs> well, uh, we seem to have lost the pictures from Africa, which is a tremendous shame because I'll keep you informed uh, as best I can. Uh, this edit sweep was built in 1967. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the African Nations Cup is that you always imagine the crowd are always incredibly excited about everything. Look at the bloke with the flag, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, you might have noticed but that I'm actually wearing the new England away shirt. Mm. Very nice. What do you think? Mm. Quite smart, I think. It's uh, grey. <laughs> Which is uh, a good idea. And I'm told by, uh, actually, by our um, series producer who used to work in menswear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was a rep for Burton. That's true. Yeah, really? Look at this. Yeah. The, uh, this is actually, supposed to be true. They've actually picked this colour because it goes well with jeans. Yeah, because the England team will be wearing jeans. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so supporters will buy it and they'll make a fortune. So they've actually planned to match it with, uh, with blue denim. Twin it up. And it actually looks good with a, with a, with a beer I've got as well. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. There's yeah. only small shirts that I actually sell, not very many. It's not great, but I prefer it to this, this shirt that this bloke, uh, the Mozambique goalie, wore in the African Nations Cup. Look at this one. Oh, no. oh crap. Is, you know when you turn up without Zip. your PE kit? <laughs> <laughs> you forget your PE kit at school and they make you play oh, anyway. They just clap. And look, they, well. they, they draw it on the back, his number in Biro. Look, see this? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't, you know that Chinese football starting on Channel 4 over the Fantastic. weekend? You know this that? weekend. But why are Channel 4 showing Chinese football? I don't know. We can ask the man who will be commentating on Chinese football. Is, is he Stato? coming? Yeah, no, him. Mm. No, he is. He is. Yes, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Looking forward well, to that. You, Obviously, it's done by Eurosport, so Stato will actually be commentating from, from. our kitchen. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a bit harsh, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look, all the things we've said to you, you've never ever before accused us of being a bit harsh. Yeah. It's always the first but time. Now we've turned on Eurosport. Yeah, no, he's gone. He's, gone. <laughs> he's never been a commentator before, eh? God bless him. No, yeah. he's uh, this, is, this is how we've trained his, him on. Yeah, it's his big break. Oh, do you know any of the players? Snooker. Do you know any of the players? Great. The last joke was about John Virgo, two series ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good world. question, Daddy. Do you know any of the players, the star players over there? You've got the names all sussed. Well, I've got, well, you'll have to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to whet your appetite, we, we've, uh, we've actually got a clip of Channel 4 um, Chinese football coverage with Stato commentator, and all I can say is Brilliant. watch out Alan Shearer. From here, it's a fair effort, it's a great effort, and must be. And a fine save from the keeper to deny leaping. That's a poor back pass now. And Fu Bing's in trouble here. And this is Lee Bing. Oh, what a miss. That was Lee Ping, was it? Lee Bing, yeah. Mm. Ping. Lee Ping is Lee a brilliant Ping. name. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Ping. <laughs> Going was it Jason of. Lee Ping? <laughs> <laughs> and the goal is called Key Ping. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> The nice thing about Chinese football is an hour later you feel like watching another match. <laughs> <laughs> and, and somebody had to. <laughs> anyway, Danny, despite everything that you've been saying, we, we know you're a big fan of Italian football because we saw you at the Milan game the other week. Oh, Q, huge fat bloke. I'll buy that. Oh, you tried to scupper it. You tried to scupper it with a huge, huge fat bloke. Yes, it but it was still funny. The first one, I was like, I'll buy him, all right? I'll really suck it in there. I'll buy that fella. And then the other bloke walks in. I'll get Andrea Dworkin. I thought Danny saying Q, huge fat bloke, actually helped the cat. Yeah, he did. Because people were on the edge of their seats. He so had to be huge and fat now, and he was. And he was. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Now, the thing about these players going to a foreign culture is often they, uh, they don't make any attempt to fit in, you know. But a bloke wrote to us, a Mr V Clifford, and he sent us a postcard from Turkey to show this hasn't been the case with Graham Sooners. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> He's really joined in, hasn't he? Yeah. I've been up smoking a, a hookah there. Mm. There was a time, this was, I think it was 86, um, West Brom was sponsored oh, by the No Smoking <coughs> campaign. 
and all the posters with them on um, to encourage kids not to smoke. The slogan was "Champions Don't Smoke," <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we got relegated that season. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to put another bit on the bottom: "Champions Don't Smoke." However, we smoke like a bloody chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Look what happened to us? Apparently, though, apparently Colin Hendry smokes. <laughs> show that you did actually oh, called the last cigarette I oh, remember that, yeah. yeah but only that. on this show could you, I think, find <laughs> yeah, a common entry looking like <laughs> parrots smoking a cigarette. <laughs> 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 you know, I should say, if there's any children are watching, and I know, I know you do, that that wasn't really Colin Hendry no. smoking. It was like a bird thing. Yeah. And so it's not clever to mm. smoke, especially if you want to be a good footballer and everything. Mm. So the trouble with smokers <laughs> in sport is, you know, they get out of breath and they, and they can't run so fast. At least that's what Keith Gillespie was telling me. <laughs> Shouldn't have backed off. Should have caught a cigarette on a horse as well. I think that's terribly cruel. We didn't do it. No, no, I didn't think you'd done it. All right. Obviously. We would have. We could have caught it. Let's have a look at your team, Neil. Haven't you got skulls in your squad? Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, I wish they'd play him. And you've got Steve McManaman you've got in your side? No, I haven't. Haven't you? No. Shit. For you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you do that for? I just said drop you in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, my best mate. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Steve McManaman, he's a good was. player. Don't you wish you had him? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Who I has do. got him, then? You've got him. No, I haven't got him. You know, you know I don't know I don't any of my players. Either. But if you remember, in 1956, cup final, perhaps the hardest bit of football ever, the goalie, the Man City goal, is a bloke called Bert Troutman, right? Oh. And how hard can you get? Watch this. The initial collision with Peter Murphy had broken Troutman's neck. Yet somehow he played out the last 17 minutes to seal Manchester City's 3-1 victory and earn his winner's medal like no one before or since. Bert! Come on! Oh, oh, wow. Bert. Oh, wow. Bert smiling with a broken neck. Yeah. Great, great reaction to a broken neck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. That's really... Now, it's, your modern sort of, you know, your, your arty-farty sort of bloke, like McManaman. Yeah, for, for instance. Example, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine Steve McManaman being that brave. Oh man. Let's have a Let's look at it. Who have you got? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Kevin Pressman on oh. the bench, haven't you? Yeah, I have Kevin Press. Right, he's in there. Bloody Kevin strong Pressman. bench. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why right, Kevin Pressman's on it. Well, one thing I think Kevin Pressman's probably pleased about uh, now is that Nigel Worthington is no longer his last line of defence. Watch this goal here. Bruce in the queue again. Bruce! Right, that's the goal. Now, if you watch it from the back, <laughs> keep your eyes on Nigel on the far post. <laughs> he wasn't even looking, was he? It's my favourite goal of that season. <laughs> Ah, oh, that'll be the ball then. That'll be the ball. Yeah. That'll be a goal against us. It, though, be, and that was like three minutes into injury time, that, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, so that was that game they pulled back two goals in injury time. I think when that bus that Nigel was waiting for turned Just up. Oh, <laughs> that'll be the ball. <laughs> and now it's time for Phoenix from the Flames. This yeah. week, Liverpool clinched the championship in 1980. <laughs> so, who are we doing today? Avi Cohen. Abby Cohen. When did he play for Tottenham? <laughs> he played for Liverpool. Oh. So uh, are we going to recreate the theft of his Volvo? <laughs> yeah, can you not make him out to be some sort of ridiculous Jewish stereotype? He'll be here any second. Hello? <laughs> uh, excuse me, can you tell me the way to White Hart Lane? <laughs> Abby? Yes. Oh, thank heavens. Come with me, sir. I'll show you the way. Was that David Badir? Yeah. I never realised he looked so Jewish. No, no, no. He, he's the one with the glasses. Oh, I meant the one with the glasses. 
So anyway, Abby, we've come here to talk about... <laughs> nice ball, Bill. Yeah, I had one of those, but when I was in Liverpool... Yeah, it's uh, been... yeah anyway, uh, uh, we're here to talk about your debut game at Anfield in 1980, the day that Liverpool clinched the championship. Tell us about your first goal. I went for a header, uh, I make one, two, and I kick the ball on my right foot, right to the top corner. It's going to come to Hurd. And there goes Geddes again. Linton. Oh, is it own goal by Ali Cohen, is it? It's gone on the far post. Well done. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like to think I started a great tradition of Israeli international doing well at Anfield. Teal let it run, and he might have made a mistake. <laughs> Rosenthal is going to score. <laughs> the is in the ball. What a let off the villa. So anyway, Abby, um, were there any other... Oh, hello again. Thanks very much for telling me the way to White Hart Lane. Oh, it would have been very embarrassing if I'd been late. Still, not as embarrassing as that goal I missed for Liverpool. <laughs> so anyway, Abby, were there any other Jewish players at Liverpool? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh... Ellen Hansen certainly wasn't. <laughs> Listen, I did score a goal for Liverpool at that day. Oh, good. Well, we can recreate that then. Yeah, uh, Sami Lee took the throw. Um, Kenny Daglish received the ball and he passed the ball into the box. Uh, Ray Kennedy just left it for me and I shot it uh, in the back to the net. Finding Dalglish. <laughs> well, that was a, quite a successful pass there. I might uh, retire for a couple of seasons. You know? Maybe play a bit of golf. And here comes Abby Cohen. Oh, I say! At the same end, he's got one back. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> With my Oscar ass. <laughs> Very good. So anyway, uh, thanks to Neil and Danny, and of course to Vera. Yeah, and uh, now we're actually away for the next five weeks on our mid-season break, but when we come back, our guests will be Gary Lineker and Peter Schmeichel. <laughs> <laughs> God, I look forward to that. I bet that's Jeff Astle. Hey, but... Where is it? There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything the traffic will allow. Nowhere could it be that happy feeling when you are sealing that extra bow. There's no People I show, people they smile when they are low. Even with a turkey that you know will fall, you may be stranded out in the cold. Still you wouldn't change it for a sack of gold. Let's go on with the show. The costumes, the scenery, the makeups, the pops, the audience that lift you when you're down. The headaches, the heartaches, the backaches, the flops, the sheriff that rescues you out of town. There's no people like show people, they don't run out of door. Yesterday they told you that you would go far, that night you open and there you are. Next on your dressing room they send a star, let's go on with If you...